This video may be going over the procedures and tools required to hand sharpen your round ground saw chain. And if you don't know if your saw chain is round ground, it is round ground. Let's take a look at some of the tools that are needed and or are useful uh, and then we'll go through the procedure. At the absolute minimum, you will have to have a round file with a file handle. The round file is what's going to be pressed through and file the metal away, sharpening your chain. Next up on the list is going to be a flat file along with a depth gauge. Flat file is going to take down your depth gauges and the depth gauge for your depth gauge is going to give you the proper height at which the depth gauge needs to be filed to. So I have two different depth gauges here. Uh, this is a .025, this is a .030. So you'll get a bit deeper of a bite using one of these. Another thing that's nice to have, not necessary, is a file card. File cards are used to clean out your files. You just brush with the grain and it'll clean the metal shavings out of your file. Always good to have a scrunch handy, tension your chain up before you sharpen. This is a basic round file with a handle and this gauge clamped on top. I'll go over the benefits of using one of these after showing you how to file just using the file. And next up we have the bad boy, the 2-in-1. This has built-in round file and flat files, so this is going to take your depth gauge down at the same time you're sharpening your cutter. It's also nice to have one of these on hand. This is a measurement tool. Over on this side is the measurement tool for the drive links, so you can get the gauge of your chain. Uh, these holes are slotted the appropriate size of files, so you can see they're labeled. This is 730 seconds for 404 chain, 1364 is for 3 8 and on down. You can also measure your bar gauge using the corners. You can see they are labeled with the appropriate measurement. And you can also get the pitch of the chain uh, lining up the cutters with the measurements on the sides. This is my MS270. It is a 325 pitch chain. So on here you can see we have a 325. And if you line it up with the three, three rivets, you'll see the rivets fit right in there. Uh, if you try to line up with one of the others, it just won't fit, so it's telling us this is a 325. All right, first step in sharpening your chain is that you want to have a clean chain. Uh, this isn't really going to be too possible if you're out in the field, but if you're in the shop, go ahead and uh, if you have a compressor, grab some compressed air and uh, clean your chain up. Uh, also, you can use a paintbrush. That's the uh, next uh, recommended method. Uh, use whatever you have handy. If you don't clean it, you're going to get wood chips buried into your file and grease and everything, and it's just not going to file properly or at all, really. All right, second step in the chain sharpening process is you want to tension the chain. Uh, you want it tighter than you normally would. So this is a, a toolless chain adjust, so I'm going to go ahead and loose my bar nut, drive out my bar, and check it. That's pretty snug. It's snug, but I can still turn it. So when you're done sharpening, you want to go ahead and loosen it up just a tad and uh, get cutting again. For sharpening, you don't really have to have a, a stump vise or a shop vise. Uh, you can do it, uh, you know, on a tailgate. I find pretty handy if I don't have anywhere else available, or even on the ground. But it, it's often preferred if you do have a vise available to uh, stick your machine in a vise. My vise here in the shop is actually a little too small, so uh, if you are like me and have a smaller vise and uh, you can't get it clamped in there without running your cutter teeth in the metal, I'll show you my uh, solution to fix that. All right, so here's my vise. What I've done is I've taken a uh, piece of wood and uh, just snapped it in half, so I have two pieces one for either side. So what I do is I stick a block on one side and I can put a little pressure on it to hold it in place. Stick a block, stick it on the other side. And at this point you angle your bar so you've got pressure points on both pieces of wood. They hold it in place. You want to make sure your chain's not resting on the bottom like mine just was. But uh, with them held in place you can go ahead and tighten up. Go ahead and snug it down. Don't be afraid unless you have like a Sugihara or a light bar. Uh, this is solid steel. Should have mentioned earlier, you want to make sure you have the right size file. Uh, bigger chains generally take bigger files. This is a general overview of what file size your chain takes. And also I will put in the description of the movie some links to helpful sites. Also, I have uh, two chain boxes here. So this is the steel and it's got a list of the different types of chain and the files they use and angles, which I'll go over here in a moment. The same for this organ chain box has all the measurements. But this is a 325 chain, so it's using a 3 16 So after you've gotten the proper file, you want to uh, go ahead and, the way I like to do it is I find the master link in the chain. This is a full comp chain, so it goes cutter, drive link, cutter, drive link, cutter, drive link, cutter, but you'll notice there's no cutter there. Now wherever there's a break, uh, or if you'll notice that this uh, tie strap is yellow, 
That's the uh, master link. You'll see mentioned pretty often that you can color in one of the cutters, the permanent marker or something to uh, let you know where your starting point is. I generally just use the uh, master link as a starting point. It's easy to recognize. Once you've got your proper file, you want to uh, make sure you have your proper angles set up. So on the axis running parallel with the bar, for the most part, on the majority of the chains out there, and if yours is a pretty common machine with a pretty common chain, it's going to be zero degrees. It's going to be completely perpendicular to that axis. You're not going to have it angled this way or this way. For 99% of the chains out there, uh, you're generally going to have a 30 degree angle of file in reference to the axis running straight up and down. So this is about 30 degrees right here. Uh, this would be zero, this would be 90. So you're more than likely going to be at a 30 degree angle. All right, so after you've gotten your angles and you've located your master link or colored one in so you know where you started, you're going to set the tip of the round file right there in the, next to the cutter head. And at this point, note that the file sticks above the tip of the cutter. So we've got a close up of the cutter head. And as I lay my file in there, you'll see in reference to this depth gauge up here, it actually sits up above a little bit just as it does the top of the cutter head. So when it's in there, it's going to sit above it. All right, so now that we know the angles and where in relation to the top of the cutter head your file is going to sit, we're going to go through the motion of the filing. So the file is going to file only in the forward direction, this direction. And when you are filing, you generally want to kind of hold the tip of the file and push with your back hand using your front hand to guide it. It will only file in that direction, so once you've gone through the whole file, go ahead and lift it up out, or generally I kind of turn it to the sides where it's not in touching the cutter tooth, and pull it back, set it back in, and do it again. Now when you are applying pressure, if you put too much pressure straight down, you're just going to start filing down into the tie strap. If you put too much pressure going back this direction, instead of the file sitting over the top of the cutter head and giving you that nice concave roundedness that uh, is the sharpness and allows you to cut, you're going to take the cutter and you're going to bring it up here and you're just going to get a flatter edge on that top point and it's not going to cut as well. Go ahead and take your file. Let's actually do a file push. I tried to go slow. It's kind of hard to do slow though. But you can see it did take some material away. Let's give it uh, two more swipes. There you go. And this was already pretty sharp, but now you can run your finger over it and it's really sharp. The most common method of advancing the chain and sharpening the next cutter is you just uh, stick your file in that cutter tooth that you just got done sharpening. And you just kind of push your chain forward. So you don't move, you move the chain. So now I'm just going to drop back into the next cutter. Give it the same number of file passes that I did on this one. Come back, move forward. And you're going to do that all the way through your chain until you come back to your master link. At that point, take your saw out of the vise, flip it 180 so it's facing the other direction, and sharpen the other side. It's very important when you're sharpening the other side, you apply the same even pressure that you did on these. If you don't, you'll file more or less metal away. And after a few filings, you'll notice that your chain will actually start cutting in a curved line. Your, your cuts will no longer be straight. They'll start uh, bowing. All right. I've gone through my chain and I've found a cutter tooth here that is quite a bit more damaged than the rest. When you come across one of these, what I like to do is just give it the same number of file passes that I did the others. And even if it is not as sharp, it'll be sharper than it was. Over time, I won't have to worry about this cutter tooth being shorter than the others. It'll be the same length even if it isn't quite as sharp. And then the next time when you sharpen this chain, it'll probably be about the same as the others and it'll end up sharp in the, uh, in the long run. Once you file all your cutters, dropping the camera down to the same level as these cutters, you will notice the cutter tooth is actually angled up. It is not parallel with the bar. It is shorter in the back and it gets taller in the front. So as you file, 
you're taking metal away and this will slowly wear back. Your depth gauge here is what determines how much of this cutter tooth enters the wood and cuts. As this wears back, you'll be getting less and less cutting because the depth gauge actually stays the same until the point where it won't pretty much cut at all. So what we need to do is occasionally we need to file down these depth gauges as well. The way that we take down the depth gauges is with a common flat file and with our depth gauge tool. So what you do is you take your depth gauge tool and you simply lay it on top of the cutter heads, leaving one of the depth gauges in this slot. If it needs to be filed down, the depth gauge will stick up a little bit from that slot. Now the correct method of doing this is feeling for it poking up and if it pokes up, go ahead and remove your gauge, file completely flat and then check it again until it no longer protrudes up the top. Uh, generally, I don't do this. It takes a long time, so I'll just leave this on here and I'll just run my file across it. Occasionally, you will have to replace your gauge, but uh, they're pretty cheap, so it's not a big deal. In addition, because you're filing flat, these will also need to be rounded occasionally, not too often though, really. If you just have a sharp angle where the depth gauge hits the wood, you'll get a lot of vibration. And so you've got to round the tops every once in a while. So whereas normally you're just filing flat across to round them, you kind of turn your file at an angle, run a filing pass across, at the same time gradually decreasing that angle until you end up flat. Now I'll give you a nice rounded profile so as that's dragging across the wood, it's not vibrating and chattering in your hands. Using your basic round file, you now have a sharp chain. A step up from your basic round file is your round file with a clamped on gauge. This is going to make it uh, quite a bit easier. One of the big advantages of using one of these is that it has the 30 degree angle scribed right here in the metal. If you're unsure where 30 degrees is, you just line up that scribed line with the bar and you're at 30 degrees. If you're out here, you're way less than 30 degrees. If you're way back here, you're way more than 30 degrees. In addition, you can see we have a 10 degree mark scribed on here as well. So that's one advantage, but by far the biggest advantage, the file does not sit underneath this gauge. It actually rests in a groove. So what that does is it sets the file a little bit above this cutter head. So when you're filing, you don't need to apply like the perfect pressure down or back. It pretty much guides it for you. So all you have to do is set your file in there, line up your angle, run your file across, come back, do it again, and you're good to go. You still have to do depth gauges though, the traditional way, but I've used these for a long time. They're pretty awesome. Recently, I picked up one of these. This is the two-in-one. This is the steel branded one, though it's not actually a steel product. It's a preferred, that's P-F-E-R-D, out of Germany. They're the ones that actually make this. Honestly, I'll never go back. This thing cuts down on the time that it takes to sharpen and do depth gauges drastically. You know, I swear by this now, it is incredibly useful to have. Because if you do have to do depth gauges, it takes a while doing the uh, traditional method. All you're going to do on this is line up the back bottom file with the arrow. So I know I'm going in that direction, so I line it up. I go ahead and set that file down in the groove. These bars rest on the top of the cutter heads and give you your depth measurement. So this flat file takes down your depth gauge at the same time that that round file back there is sharpening the chain. So you just pop it on there. Uh, your 30 degree mark is scribed in here in addition to being uh, on the plastic itself. So you just line that plastic up running parallel with the bar. Give it a file. Move on to the next cutter head. Just set it in there. Bam. There you go. You can't really see it too well, but that depth gauge got touched up a little bit. So because it's doing it every time you sharpen a cutter tooth, you're always going to have perfect depth gauges and get the best cutting possible out of your chain. Again, this is the uh, steel version, but it's actually preferred. Uh, you can get them from your steel dealer or you can get them from uh, any online retailer that sells preferred products. Um, I pick mine up generally from uh, treestuff.com because they're awesome.
Have a good one, humans.